afternoon, good evening, and a very warm welcome to each and every one of you who have gathered here to be a part of Threat Team Security Summit 2021. Yesterday, we saw an amazing turnout from your side, which clearly shows your enthusiasm for our summit. We also witnessed some enthralling and informative sessions from our respected speakers. We have equally exciting sessions waiting for you all today also. And without further ado, I would like to introduce our speaker uh, for the first session of the day, Ms. Carolyn Wong. She is the Chief Security Officer at Cobalt IO. Carolyn Wong is a strategic leader with strong cybersecurity knowledge and deep experience delivering global programs. Her practical information security knowledge stems from broad experience as a digital consultant, a semantic product manager, and day-to-day -day leader roles at eBay and Zynga. Also, she authored the popular textbook, Security Metrics, A Beginner's Guide. I am glad to welcome Ms. Carolyn Wong to the stage. Welcome, Carolyn. The stage is all yours. Thank you so much. I am so happy to be here with you today virtually at the Red Team Security Summit. Uh, for me, it is 8.30 p.m. in the evening, and I expect that for many of the people here, uh, it is morning, it is midday, maybe it is night. Um, I, as, as Camilla and I were just talking about, uh, this to me is the magic, right, of the technology that we have today. Uh, and so I'm so happy to be here with you. Um, while I'm giving my introduction, uh, I will uh, also get my slides up. So I want to tell you a little bit about my background. Uh, so I began my security career, my DevSecOps career, 15 years ago, leading security teams at eBay and at Zynga. These were super cool places to be working in cybersecurity. In both cases, we were running online operations 24 by 7, with millions of simultaneous users daily. eBay had an uptime requirement of 99.94% .94 and is one of the first major electronic commerce shops enabled strangers to transact with each other over the internet. Zynga was growing incredibly rapidly as an early adopter of Amazon AWS. In 2009, the Zynga game Farmville launched and in just a few weeks, the game went from zero to 10 million daily active users. A few months later, it rose to 80 million daily active users. Today at Cobalt, we build security software. And like many DevOps companies, we have data-driven, product-based teams. We value automation and failing fast. Today, I will talk about five interwoven themes. Theme number one, modern software and internet security is not a zero-sum game. Theme number two, the hardest problems to solve in cybersecurity are not technical. Theme number three, the most powerful solutions that are required to address cybersecurity problems today will require people and process innovation. Theme number four, cybersecurity has many different facets and it can seem complicated, but it is not impossibly complex. There are fundamentals that we as industry professionals can rely on, and we should not allow ourselves to get too caught up in the myth that these problems are too hard to solve. I'm just gonna check my mic, okay. Theme number five, protecting the world's digital value is not something that it's just the job of security professionals or just the job of software developers. Cybersecurity has always been an outcome, a result of the behaviors and interactions and decisions and actions of many different people. This has never been more true than it is today, and we really are all in this together. My hope is that if you are working in DevSecOps on a day-to-day -day basis, as you are making decisions and solving problems and making things happen, that these themes might be something you can draw upon for inspiration. I do expect that these themes will continue to evolve. But when I ask myself, why am I excited about the future of Security Cloud Native? These are some of the answers that I have today. First and foremost, security is about 
protecting value. In today's modern world, a lot of the things that we value are shifting from the physical realm to the digital realm. And that is why cybersecurity is so important. Security practitioners used to have this story that they would tell about how to think about cybersecurity. The story says that if Sonal and I are running away from a bear, I don't have to outrun the bear. I just have to outrun Sonal. In this scenario, the underlying assumption is that I value myself and I don't value Sonal. My success doesn't depend on her. And so as long as I get away from the bear, it doesn't matter to me if Sonal becomes the bear's lunch. The problem with this analogy, and there are many problems with this analogy, is that in reality, software companies and the digital value created by organizations don't exist in silos. We are not independent islands. I actually think that a more appropriate analogy for how things work in cybersecurity would be a three-legged race. Because in a three-legged race, my partner and I are dependent upon each other. In order to win, we have to work together in lockstep. And I really think this is more of how it is today, truly, when it comes to software security. Every software company, including ours, is part of a tightly interwoven ecosystem of software companies that provide a variety of products and services. Each of those companies uses other software companies to help them do their work and so on. A perfect example of this dependency between software companies happened to me one Monday morning. That morning, I woke next to my then five-year-old daughter on the bottom bunk of her bunk bed, and I looked at my phone. It was my first day back at work after a two-week vacation, and I had received this text message from my friend and colleague, Anna. It turned out Slack was down, and the outage lasted about six hours or so. This was not a desirable way to start the first working day of the new year. At Cobalt, we are a hyper-growth B2B SaaS company. Today, we serve about 1,000 customers, and we use about 75 or so vendors. You can think about the company, and any DevOps company really, like a tree. The vendors we rely on are like the roots of the tree, and the customers are like the branches. And if all goes well, those branches will bear fruit year after year. I have not one, but two young kids, and we watch a lot of children's movies in our house. As I was thinking about this particular theme, I couldn't help but think of this song lyric from the old Disney movie, Pocahontas. And we are all connected to each other in a circle, in a hoop, that never ends. This is how it is with modern software companies. And this means that security is not something that we can care about in a vacuum. We must acknowledge the dependencies that we have on each other, on other software organizations for the state of our security. It is no longer enough to just care about the security of your own because your vendors in security, your partners in security, these things affect your risk profile and your ability to protect the value that you create. I happen to be the LinkedIn Learning Instructor for the Master, the OWASP Top 10 Learning Path. What you may not know about me is that before I started creating the content for these instructional videos a few years ago, I actually didn't have a complete understanding of every little piece of the OWASP Top 10. The first version of the OWASP Top 10 came out in 2003, and I began my career in cybersecurity in 2005. I was the chief of staff to the global information security team at eBay, and naturally, since eBay is an online marketplace that allows strangers to buy and sell from each other over the internet, web application security was of extremely high importance. The problem was that every once in a while, I would download the OWASP Top 10 document and try to read through it. 
and I would get stuck. I would get bored or I would get confused or something more urgent would come up and I would put it back down. So I never really learned all of the details of the OWASP top 10 until I had to teach it to other people. The current version of the OWASP top 10 was released in September, just a couple of months ago. And the crazy thing is that despite having been through several iterations over the past 17 years, the types of issues found in web applications is pretty much the same. If I compare the 2003 version of the OWASP top 10 to the 2021 version, it's actually depressingly similar. It is the same stuff that the best and the brightest in our industry have been talking about for 17 years. Why haven't these problems been fixed? We know how to find them. We know how to fix them. And we know how to prevent them. To me, this fact is very eye-opening. And it gives us an opportunity to do something different and better in the future. So this leads me to a topic which is, I believe there is a common misconception that the biggest and baddest problems in cybersecurity are technical problems. Let's start by talking about the 2017 Equifax breach. There were more than 140 million people affected. A widely accepted theory that the attackers were state-sponsored spies from China, a CEO who stepped down three weeks after the breach became public, and $1.4 billion to clean up the, nest, the mess, and an FTC settlement. How did this breach happen? It was not because of a super sophisticated zero-day technical issue. It was because some software was found to be vulnerable, a patch was made available, and Equifax failed to deploy the patch. This was not a crazy technical problem that lacked a solution. The technical solution was available. This was a lack of people and process innovation. More recently, threat actors managed to plant malware in some monitoring software, which happened to be in use by some 250 or so organizations. When the news, when the news first broke, this breach was described as a highly sophisticated, targeted, and manual supply chain attack by an outside nation state, which sounds really intense, and it is. But when you draw back the curtain, it seems as though maybe they had used the password SolarWinds123 to, quote unquote, protect the company's update server. In which case, it is no wonder malicious threat actors took advantage and planted some malware. This is, unfortunately, a simple security misconfiguration. Every year, for the past several years, Cobalt produces a state of pen testing report. The state of pen testing 2021 is based on 1,600 pen tests, which took place in 2020. And when we look at the data across these 1,600 pen tests, we find that misconfiguration is the number one most commonly identified vulnerability type across Cobalt pen tests, and that this is the case for the fourth year in a row. The next topic I want to discuss is the complicated nature of cybersecurity. This picture behind, uh, behind the heading on this slide is what's called a CISO mind map. And I used it here because it's really complicated. There's a lot to think about. There are so many domains uh, that a cybersecurity professional uh, has to think about. And cybersecurity, it has many different facets. It can seem complicated, but it is not impossibly complex. There are fundamentals that we as industry professionals can rely on, and we should not allow ourselves to get too caught up in the myth that these problems are too hard to solve. In 2005, 
as a new college grad with a fresh degree in electrical engineering and computer science. I started my first ever full-time job as an information security engineer at eBay. I was handed a 50-page stack of information security policies and told that I was responsible for answering questions about it from technology teams and from the business. This was very overwhelming. I thought to myself, how am I ever going to learn all of this stuff? It seems so complex. I found out after a few months that by meeting with people who had questions about eBay's security policy, writing them down, asking my manager, and going back to the person to share with them my newly acquired answer, I found out that people were asking the same questions over and over again. Throughout my career, I've been on two security teams as a practitioner. I've led a global product management team. I've done application security consulting, and I'm currently at my first startup. This series of diverse experiences has helped me to see that cybersecurity is complicated, but it is not impossibly complex. Despite the fact that NIST 853 is nearly 500 pages long, and PCI DSS is more than 130 pages long. And the BSIM has more than 100 security activities. And the ASVS is more than 60 pages long. Despite these long documents, I really think that the fundamental principles of cybersecurity, application security, software security, can be boiled down to four basic building blocks. A few years ago, my colleague Julie Kurt and I worked together on a white paper called A Practitioner's Guide to Application Security. It is a 20-page document that outlines how simple, not necessarily easy, but simple application security can be. It includes a one-page poster that we call the Modern AppSec Framework. This framework has just four components. Number one, govern. In other words, know your assets. Number two, find. Number three, fix. And number four, prevent. If you know about your critical assets and you can find, fix, and prevent, and prevent security problems, that's, that's really all there is to it. Of course, it is much easier to say than to do, but sometimes we think it's so complicated and it's really, it can be simple. Right now, in cybersecurity land, there is a lot of emphasis on automation. The storyline says that because we have a lot of cybersecurity problems and we also have a talent shortage, you should try to automate as much as possible so that you are less dependent on people. I happen to strongly disagree that automation can solve all of the world's cybersecurity problems. As my friend and former colleague, Vanessa Sauter, eloquently shared in her B-Sides presentation last year, there are entire classes of security vulnerabilities that can only be discovered by humans. Finding things like race conditions, business logic flaws, and chained exploits cannot be automated. Additionally, we need human creativity, human innovation, human judgment, human opinions, and human decisions to drive the right outcomes in this industry. It is true that software is being developed faster and faster. And some cybersecurity teams are using automation to manage some of the incredible volume of work that they're trying to tackle. However, I think that solving the most important cybersecurity problems have to include both automation and manual effort. Both DevOps and DevSecOps benefit by innovating when it comes to people and process. Security practitioners in particular need a better model for talent distribution. They need standardized, automated workflows that can take the friction out of working cross-functionally between security and engineering teams to find and fix security issues. Consider for a moment the following hypothetical scenario. Imagine that we're in the midst of a global pandemic and a highly infectious deadly virus is affecting millions of people around the world. It is so bad that in the world's richest country, more than half a million people, quite a lot more than half a million people, have already died from this disease. 
If you think it's a technical problem, then you might think the most important thing to do is to develop a vaccine. This is a super hard scientific problem to solve, and it is the scientist's job to figure that out. But what happens when an effective vaccine is created? The technical issue is solved. So does the problem just disappear? Of course not. In some ways, it might actually be easier to invent a completely new vaccine than it is to figure out how to do procurement and distribution and communication and actually getting people vaccinated. Just as we can know about the OWASP top 10 for 20 years, doesn't mean that we can eliminate and forget about those types of problems. Just because you have a vaccine doesn't mean that you can vaccinate enough people to eliminate and forget about a pandemic. I'm here to challenge where we are today as an industry and look forward to imagine where we are headed it is time for us to examine the principles that we think about when it comes to cybersecurity and how the future of cloud native security is going to be because it will be what we make of it. I want to end this talk by describing something that I believe is completely fundamental and yet it's not often acknowledged in the security industry. Security is not a vitamin or a Band-Aid. It's not something you can inject or do at the last minute or add on. It is not a feature. Security has always been the result of decisions and actions made by different people. It's actually the outcome of an unpredictable dance between many people. I believe that for DevSecOps to be successful, we must build a collaborative approach that brings us together. If you know how to salsa or lindy hop, you can extend a hand, invite a partner, and step onto the dance floor. But security is not always invited to the party. Too often, development, security, and operations dance alone. We must invent the dance style to sync our movements and create a beautiful partnership. This is the last slide of my talk, uh, and I want to share with you a lyric from a movie which is called High School Musical. We're all in this together. Once we know that we are, we're all stars. And we see that we're all in this together. And it shows when we stand hand in hand, make our dreams come true. This is my email. And I would love to connect on LinkedIn. Uh, and I'd love to talk with you. Uh, I believe we have a couple of minutes. Um, and if anyone has a discussion or Q&A, uh, then I would love to love to chat. Thank you. Thank you, Carolyn. That was an amazing session. Uh, it was really reassuring to hear that um, automation is not the ultimate solution and human beings are equally important. I think that will be very reassuring to a lot of people. And it is also quite nice to hear that um, it's not always complex. Uh, it's actually a, a point where our mindset should be changed and we need to adapt to things and uh, always like uh, bring uh, the better version of, of ourselves to meet all those challenges. Uh, thank you so much. So uh, we can go to the question answer session. Um, um, there is a question for you. Um, yes. Um, ah, OK. Yes, I'm just scrolling through uh, the discussion and looking. Um, there is, uh, can you write your email here? Yes. So my email is caroline at cobalt.io. Um, you can also find me on LinkedIn, uh, Caroline Wong. Um, I also, I teach uh, LinkedIn learning courses. Uh, there is actually a brand new one on the new OWASP top 10 for 2021. Um, and what I'll do after this session, uh, if you connect with me, if you follow me, then I will make a post uh, so that if you are interested, you can watch that for free uh, at no cost. Um, which certification is best for cloud security associate or administrator? That is a good question. Um, I think it's, I receive questions about uh, certifications often. 
Uh, and here's my tricky answer. The answer is to go and look at the job descriptions. Go and look and search for cloud security associate, cloud security administrator, and look to see which certification they are asking for. Uh, because I think the best answer to that question is actually just going to be, what does the market say? I do have Instagram, but it is not public. But yeah, oh, LinkedIn is public and that's where you can follow me. Is certification important for every job? It's not important for every job. Um, I will say, I do think that a very good certification to get is the OSCP. I do not have an OSCP myself. Um, I do think that if you want to get started in cloud security, even though the OSCP is, uh, even though it is kind of network based, a lot of the fundamentals are uh, the same. I, you know what? I'm gonna also say uh, I know some other ones, and I'm just gonna uh, just going to look it up in real time while we are here together because I see a lot of interest in the questions about the uh, the certifications, and so I want to uh, give you uh, some uh, that I think are good. So let me actually say them as well as type them into the chat. Um, so. Great question. What is your suggestion to the students who are going to start their career in ethical hacking? Uh, I think you should get an OSCP. Um, and here are here are the certs which I think are good to get. Um, and they're not really in any order. OSWE, AWS, OSCE, CREST, uh, GPEN. And here's where this is coming from. So the first place you can look is job descriptions. You search for the title of the job that you want and you find, you know, 10, 20, 50, 100 roles and you just like make a list, right? Which certifications are they asking for? That's the one that you need to get. Uh, the, the, this list that I provided to you now, uh, Cobalt, I actually didn't talk too much about Cobalt in the talk because, you know, that's... Anyway, Cobalt is a pen test company. We work with, you know, 300... Google Cloud or Amazon Cloud in the next five to seven years. That's a super good question. I don't know. Um, if I were, if I, if I like had to choose, I would say Google, but I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. I think that's a really good question. And I, you know, um, hey, Carolyn, oh, congratulations, we another, Shashi. We had another few questions in the question answer session. So one question was uh, how to get private cloud. Yeah, I will say, I am absolutely not an expert on private cloud. Uh, so it's not, it's not the best question for me. Uh, okay, the next question was, uh, where does ethical hacking come and roll this? So ethical hacking is super important because fundamentally security is about you have something you want to protect and you want to protect it from people who will attack it. And if you are an ethical hacker, then you can learn to attack it yourself. You can find the vulnerabilities and that gives you the ability to fix those vulnerabilities before they are exploited by a malicious actor. So ethical hacking is extremely important. It's also, um, and I wish I had this skill set. I am, I am not myself a penetration tester. I am not myself an ethical hacker. I don't have that tech skill set. I wish I did. Because if I did, then I could just show people, you know, I could just demonstrate it. Um, and so, uh, yeah, for someone who wants to start with a journey in cloud security, what approach do you suggest? Would you mind saying any source to learn about Cobalt? So Cobalt, uh, we actually have um, quite a lot on the website, quite a lot of resources, quite a lot of white papers. Uh, there were two resources that I uh, spoke about during the talk. One of them is the Practitioner's Guide to Application Security. Another one is the State of Pen Testing 2021. Um, and so, uh, you know, uh, check it out. It's all uh, available at no cost uh, for download. And for someone who wants to start with the journey in cloud security, what approach do you suggest? I suggest you look at the biggest companies in cloud security and you study them. Twilio, for example, um, even Salesforce, you know, who are sort of the big cloud players and what, what did they do? I would say to study uh, the big companies that are known for cloud security. Good resource for Kubernetes security. 
Uh, I am not the person to give you that resource. Um, but if you want to ask me uh, via LinkedIn or via my email, uh, I can ask one of my colleagues who is a pen tester for Cobalt. Uh, and I, I expect that they, they know the answer to that and I can pass it on. That was uh, some great questions. And the way you answered that was also very great. Um, I think uh, we are uh, done with the question and answer session. Um, that was wonderful. The way the way you answered all the questions and all those tactics uh, for everyone. Uh, that's simply great for those who want to find uh, a career in that or who want to explore with the news. That was really great of you. Um, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Carolyn, uh, for your support uh, to the summit and the way you are handling all those things. Uh, and the way you always want to learn about it and always always facing your challenges um, head on. Thank you so much. We'd, we'd love to collaborate with you in the future as well. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for being a part of Red Team Security Summit 2021. Thank you, Carolyn. It's my pleasure. So thank you so much. Have a great, have a great rest of conference. Okay. Have a great day. Thank you.